But then a physicist would also enjoy using this equation, even though it doesn't seem appropriate. Even though work is being done on the gas, we can still use the work by the gas equation if we're careful with the signs. Q is still zero, and now we subtract, and what should I plug in for the work done by the gas? And then notice it still comes out to be positive 5, because we have two negatives here. We're subtracting a negative number, and we would get the same answer as before. Delta U is positive 5. So the point is that even when work is being done on the gas, if you feel like it, you can still use this equation. You just have to plug in a negative number over here. And the reason that we're going over this is that this is very commonly done in textbooks and in class. Very often in textbooks in class, they just choose one of these equations and do all the problems with that one equation. So very often they're just going to choose one of these and they'll do all the problems with that equation. So suppose that your professor really likes, um, really likes this equation. Well, then they would use this equation even when work is really being done on the gas. They would just plug in a negative number for W by. This is actually the way it's usually done. This is probably how you saw it in class. For example, in the textbook, yeah, in the textbook it looks like they almost always use this equation. Even when work is done on the gas, they still use this equation. They just plug in a negative number for W by. Now, so you need to know that so you can follow what the, the textbook is saying. However, as far as I'm concerned, it's probably a lot easier just to pick the equation that it makes more sense for the situation. So if work is done on the gas, I would prefer to use this equation. And if work is done by the gas, I would prefer to use this equation rather than having to use negative numbers. But you, you'll see it both ways, so it's important to be comfortable with both ways. Okay. One reason this is often not clear is that in your textbook, a lot of the time they'll just write W. Because they'll say, at the beginning of the textbook, they'll say what W means. For example, I think in your textbook, W is defined as W by. W just means the work done by the gas, but they don't keep reminding you of that, they just use W. And they expect you to remember that means W by. Well, we'll be better off if we always just write the subscript so we know whether it's the work done on or by. All right, now. The upshot of all of this, then, is we can see, suppose we want to raise the temperature of the gas. Should we do that by doing work on it or letting the gas do work? That's right. Would that mean compressing it or letting it expand? Yeah. If we compress it, that would raise the temperature. And let's say we want to lower the temperature. How can we do that? Yeah, which would mean that it would expand. That's right. So we have to know that to lower the temperature, you would let it expand. And you can see that from these two equations. If you want to add energy and add temperature, you want to do work on the gas by compressing it. But if you want to subtract energy and lower the temperature, you need to allow the gas, you need to allow work to be done by the gas. So these two forms of the fundamental law show you clearly how to add energy or remove energy by allowing work to be done um, on or by the gas over here. So these are two useful forms of the fundamental law of thermodynamics. So now we've seen there's two ways to raise the energy and the temperature. The two ways to raise the energy and the temperature, one way is to add heat. And the other way is to compress the gas, which does work on it. That's really all that the fundamental law of thermodynamics is saying. It's saying there's two ways to change the energy, to change you, to change the temperature. You can add heat, or you can do work on the gas by compressing it. And what are the two ways to lower the temperature and lower the internal energy? and it would do that by expanding or contracting. Expanding. That's right. OK, that's exactly right. This tells us the two ways to remove energy. By removing heat, that would put in the negative Q, or by allowing the gas to do work. If work is done by the gas, by expanding, that would also lower delta U. So again, uh, in a way, this fundamental law of thermodynamics is kind of common sense. It's just telling us two ways to change the temperature, two ways to add or remove heat. One thing that's very important is this definitely shows you that heat and temperature are not the same thing. Because notice, adding heat will raise the temperature, but that is not the only way to raise the temperature. You could also raise the temperature by doing work on the gas, even if there's no heat exchange. Let me emphasize that. Suppose that Q is zero. If Q is zero, that means that there's no heat exchange. But it's still possible to raise the temperature. How can we raise the temperature even without adding heat? Yeah, compressing by doing work on the gas. 
even if Q is zero, if we do work on the gas, that will, low, that will have a positive delta U. My question was, if you don't add heat, can you raise the temperature? And again, the common ordinary person's response is no, because they think that heat is the same thing as temperature. It's very tempting to say, oh, if there's no change in the heat, there can't be any temperature change. But heat and temperature are not the same thing. Heat is only one way to change the temperature. Compressing the gas is the other way to change the temperature. So we don't want to make that confusion. That's a common trap on tests. We'll, we'll keep coming back to that. OK. Now there's going to be a very important graph for a lot of these problems, which is the PV graph. So we have to get comfortable with this PV graph. Make sure that you know what's on the axes. We put volume on the horizontal axis and pressure on the vertical axis. P on the vertical and V on the horizontal, not vice versa. So what does it mean if we're moving to the right? Well, that means that the gas is expanding. This would mean gas is expanding. So what does this mean? We're compressing the gas. Good. Well, what does this mean? Um, the constant volume that increases in pressure. Yeah, pressure is going up. And, and the way I drew it was a constant volume. Good. What does this mean? Um, both pressure and volume are increasing. So is the gas expanding or compressing? Uh, expanding. That's right. OK, so it's important to be able to interpret what various movements mean here in PV space. So let's say that we have that we're moving like this. Does this uh, mean expansion or compression? Expansion. Does that mean work is being done on or by the gas? Good. So that's another new meaning here. When we're moving to the right, that means work is being done by the gas. When we're moving to the right in this graph, that means work is being done by the gas to expand itself. How about here? Would work be done by or on the gas? By. Yeah. It doesn't really matter that the pressure is changing. The key is that we're expanding. The key for work is whether you're expanding or compressing. The key for work is not really the pressure. The key for work is whether you're expanding or compressing. Anytime you're moving to the right, whether you're moving straight to the right or up and to the right, you're expanding, so work is being done by the gas. So these would both represent work done by the gas. So what can you say about the work in this case? Um, volume is increasing, so the gas is increasing. So work on the gas. Good. When we're moving to the left, we must be doing work on the gas. That's what's compressing it. Here's a typical PV curve. Here we have a typical PV curve. And we can see I've labeled this initial and this final. We could put in this arrow. The arrow is kind of superfluous because I said this was initial and this was final, but this just reinforces where we're going from and where we're going to. So in this case, is work being done by or on the gas? By. Because we're expanding. Now, it turns out that the total work that's done is the area under the PV curve. 
The total work that's done is the area under the PV curve. Uh, we won't take the time to, to prove that. We'll just memorize that the work that's done is the area under the PV curve. It's the area under the PV curve and above the horizontal axis. It's the area under the PV curve and above the horizontal axis. So this area here would represent the work. The area under the PV curve and above the horizontal axis, that is the work. In this case, is it work that's being done on or by the gas? Because it's expanding. Good.